Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. U.S. Treasury Secretary roots for French shoring says Indo-U.S. ties stronger than ever. Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan relaunches political march after surviving gun attack. And UN moves to action for an Afghanistan in crisis. And now for all the details, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Friday said India's membership in the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework will make supply chains resilient and help the entire region. Addressing a joint presser with Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman, Yellen said strong trade and investment ties are critical to the partnership between the two countries. India's membership in IPEF, the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, will make supply chains resilient and help the entire region, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said on Friday as she met Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in New Delhi. Yellen said strong trade and investment and people-to-people -people ties are critical elements to their partnership. While India is a part of the Biden's administration's signature Asian engagement project IPEF, it has opted against joining the IPEF trade pillar negotiations. Sita Raman said the meeting between the two will facilitate a coordinated policy stance on global economic challenges. Our strong trade, investment and people-to-people -people ties make the bilateral economic and financial relationship a critical element of that partnership. Earlier in the day, Yellen visited Microsoft Research Facility in Noida City and said the US and India are natural allies, quoting a former Indian Prime Minister. She said India's G20 presidency next year allows for acceleration of global coordination on debt restructuring. Yellen also said that ending the war in Ukraine was a moral imperative but that economic challenges from the conflict and from supply chain strains were drawing India and the United States closer together. India's Supreme Court on Friday ordered to set free all six convicts facing life imprisonment for role in the assassination of former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi in 1991. The Congress party, in a statement called the court's decision, totally unacceptable and completely erroneous. India's Supreme Court on Friday ordered the release of all six convicts who are currently serving life imprisonment in connection with the assassination of former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi in 1991. The bench passed the order while taking into consideration the case of A.G. Pidarivalan, another convict in the case, who was released in May this year, invoking its extraordinary power under Article 142 of the Constitution. Rajiv Gandhi was assassinated on May 21, 1991 during an election rally in Tamil Nadu by a woman suicide bomber of separatist group the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam from neighbouring Sri Lanka. The convicts have now served over 30 years for their role in the killing. Following, following the judgment of this court, dated 18-5-2022 for Pererivalan, relaying the Pererivalan, all uh, six have been released now. Uh, their conduct, their medical condition and their, uh, 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 their reformative angle all has been considered, observed and it, they have been uh, released today. The Congress party in a statement called the Apex Court's decision totally unacceptable and completely erroneous. Rajiv Gandhi's son and Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi had earlier in 2014 expressed unhappiness when the Tamil Nadu government decided to free all the convicts. He had said if a prime minister cannot get justice, a common man cannot expect it either. Pakistan's opposition PTI party chief Imran Khan on Thursday relaunched his long march and told his supporters they should keep up an anti-government march a week after he was wounded in a gun attack. 
Khan said that the long march would not stop and will instead gather strength as it closes on the capital Islamabad. Pakistan's former Prime Minister and PTI party chairman Imran Khan relaunched his long march on Thursday and told his supporters via video link that they should keep up the anti-government rally a week after he was wounded in a gun attack. The former cricket star who has been pressing for a general election since he was ousted as Prime Minister in a parliamentary vote in April was shot at the rally on November 3. The long march had halted after the attack. Khan said the long march would not stop now, adding that the protest will instead gather strength as it closes on the capital Islamabad. He said nothing could deter him from going ahead as long as snap polls were not called and he would join the protest march in Rawalpindi city in some days. और जब ये काफला इंशाल्लाह पिंडी पहुंचेगा मैं इनको वहां रिसीव करूंगा और मैं सारे पाकिस्तान से अपने लोगों को इनवाइट करूंगा सबको कहूंगा आए मीनवाइल प्राइम मिनिस्टर शहबाज शरीफ हैज अक्यूज्ड खान ऑफ अटेम्प्टिंग टू रूइन पाकिस्तान थ्रू हिज एजिटेशन ही कॉल्ड खान अ लायर एंड अ चीट एंड सेड हिज पॉलिसीज हैड लेफ्ट द इकॉनमी इन रूइंस द पॉलिटिकल टेंशन कम्स एज पाकिस्तान इज करेंटली इन द मिडस्ट ऑफ एन अनप्रेसिडेंटेड इकोनॉमिक क्राइसिस एज इट ग्रैपल्स विद माउंटिंग इन्फ्लेशन sky high foreign debt and declining foreign currency reserves the turmoil has been exacerbated by recent flooding that the government estimates caused economic losses worth 30 billion us dollars moving on rights groups have condemned the arson attack on a girls school in diamar in gilgit baltistan this week which locals have blamed on terrorists in a similar incident in 2018, 12 girls' schools were bombed and burnt down in Diyamar, where Taliban-linked militants opposed to girls' education are active. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, HRCP, and Women's Commission have expressed shock over the recent arsons attack on girls' school in Diyamar in Gilgit, Baltistan, which locals have blamed on terrorists. Reports suggest the population of Samigal area where the incident happened is around 7,000 and it was the only girls' school there with about 68 students. Both the rights group in separate statements noted that this tactic has been used by extremist elements before as well and the government must ensure the child's right to education and deal with miscreants with iron hands. Several protests were also held by activists, students and locals to demand immediate action against terrorists involved in the incident. They demanded an end to patronization and weaponization of extremists. Though local authorities said restoration work on the Burn School was underway and would be complete soon, this incident is not the first one. Similar incidents happened in the illegally occupied region in 2005 and in 2018. Twelve girls' schools were bombed and burned down in coordinated attacks in villages of Diyamar, where Taliban-linked militants opposed to girls' education are active. Pakistani Taliban and allied Islamist militants regard girls' education as anti-Islam. The United Nations overwhelmingly passed a drafted resolution on Thursday calling out the deteriorating situation in Afghanistan and setting the stage for increased aid. The world body accused the Taliban of violating human rights and plunging the war-torn country into dire economic and social conditions. The United Nations overwhelmingly passed a drafted resolution on Thursday calling out the deteriorating situation in Afghanistan and setting the stage for increased aid. The world body has accused the Taliban of violating human rights of Afghan women, failing to establish a representative government and plunging the country into dire economic, humanitarian and social conditions. Since taking control in August 2021, the Islamist Taliban have said women should not leave home without a male relative and must cover their faces, though they have been permitted to work in some government offices. The group has also continued a ban on girls' high schools. Afghanistan is in a crisis. It is in many crises. It has been 15 months since the Taliban consolidated control over the country. 
Its economy is in ruins. The humanitarian situation is disastrous. Two-thirds of the population is hungry. Girls and women are banned from learning, having a job, or getting proper medical care. Earlier this year in July, the UN mission in Afghanistan said that the Taliban were responsible for extrajudicial killings, arbitrary arrests, and inhumane punishments. No country has so far recognized the Taliban's regime in Afghanistan over the human rights issue. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development. In news from Nepal, a disaster management expert has warned of further tremors in parts of western Nepal after a 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake hit the region on Wednesday, killing at least six people. Authorities have recorded several aftershocks following the natural disaster. A disaster management expert has warned of further tremors in western Nepal after Wednesday's 6.6 .6 magnitude earthquake, which claimed at least six lives in Doti district. The earthquake was recorded as one of the biggest after the Himalayan nation formally started recording and measuring earthquakes. Nepal's National Earthquake Monitoring and Research Center till Thursday afternoon recorded about 300 aftershocks, measuring less than 4.0 magnitude. The western district of Bajura also recorded a 4.1 Richter scale aftershock. There have been researches, so many researches, and then scientific findings as well that, that the reports and their assessment says that this uh, western part of Nepal is much vulnerable to mega earthquake. It is because like Nepal uh, is located on the top of this two big tectonic plates, that is Eurasian plate and this Indian plates, and they are like moving against each other since long. And and the energy that has been accumulated beneath that and at any time it can burst, you know, and that may cause a, a mega earthquake in this region. So, experts say the western part of Nepal, which still lacks basic infrastructure, hosts non-engineered house made of mud and bricks, which can be destroyed by frequent jolts. Earlier in 2015, a high-intensity earthquake of magnitude 7.8 on the Richter scale struck center Nepal. It is estimated to have killed 8,964 people and injured close to 22,000 people. Authorities in Udhampur in India's Jammu and Kashmir recently organized a cocoon auction for the benefit of the farmers. The initiative aims to increase income of growers and help them sell their produce at competitive rates. The Seri Culture Department in Udhampur in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir organized a cocoon auction this week for the benefit of the growers as cocoon farming provides income and employment to farmers with small and marginal land holdings. A large number of farmers, mostly women, participated in the auction market to generate good revenue from the sale of cocoons. Cocoon is a short duration cash crop as the life cycle of the silkworm is 25 to 30 days duration. The auction market also aims to help the farmers to sell their produce at competitive rates to buyers. और 20 साल से ये काम कर रहा हूँ। तो पहले इसकी एक ही फसल होती थी, अब इसकी दो फसलें होती हैं। आज हम इसको दूसरी फसल लेकर मंडी आए हैं। इसमें ठीक फायदा हो जाता है। आज इसमें औरतें भी काम करती हैं, मर्द भी काम करते हैं। ठीक ठाक फायदा है इसमें। India has an overall demand of more than 48,000 metric tons of silk annually. The country is the second largest producer and consumer of silk products in the world. Around 4,400 families in Jammu and Kashmir are engaged in cocoon production. The sericulture department has chalked out various plans for the growth of the silk industry in the Union Territory. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.